Hello YouTube friends, Craig and Jason from CryptoCrane here with another video that's all about how to reflash firmware on a Bitmain miner. We'll start by showing you where and how to actually obtain the different firmware files Bitmain offers, then walk you through the processes, yep, there's more than one, of installing said firmware on a miner. Hold on to your butts. That's really good advice. Let's go! Speaking of butts. We need to start with a bit of butt covering. If your miner is working properly, there's absolutely no need ever to reflash it with a different firmware. Then why the hell would I ever want to do this, you may be asking yourself. Very reasonable question. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, is a completely and totally sensible approach to miner upkeep. But sometimes miners don't work, and the only fix turns out to be reflashing the firmware. And, sometimes Bitmain releases updated firmware files that make improvements to the original versions. So, if you're unfortunate enough that the former applies to you, or you're inquisitive enough that the latter scenario is appealing, then this video is for you. For the rest of you, we still love you, and we think you're the bee's knees. Now then, the first step in reflashing firmware is to get the firmware file for your miner. Here's how we do that. Firstly, Go to the Bitmain Firmware Download Support page, service.bitmain.com backslash support backslash download. Find the miner model you need firmware for. Be sure to pay attention to the descriptions. Sometimes there are multiple firmware files for some miner models. Click the firmware link under the correct miner model. Finally, once it finishes downloading, take note where it ends up. We suggest moving it to a convenient reference point, like your desktop, but the important thing is that you know where it is. Boom, you've got firmware. Okay, so we've got our firmware in hand. Next up is actually getting it on the miner. There are two ways to reflash firmware, through the miner's web interface or with the aid of a micro SD card. Here's where things can get a tad dicey. Depending on both if your miner's malfunctioning or not, as well as the model of the miner in question, the web interface route may not even be available, meaning you'll have to take the manual approach. And even then, there are a couple of different ways you can, or will be forced to, take, depending on the state of your miner. But never fear, we've got you covered. Let's start with a simple one, going through the miner's web interface. Once you're logged in, throw the miner's IP address in a browser's navigation bar and access the web interface. Click on the Upgrade tab. This is a great time to mention that we already made a video that goes over all the many and varied features, functions, and facets of a minor web interface. So if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed, that would be a great place to start. Look for the link in the description. At the bottom of the page, you'll see Flash New Firmware Image. Click the Choose File button, then add the firmware file you downloaded from the Bitmain support site, and click Open. Quick side note, some minor web interfaces have a Save Settings checkbox in this section. Checking that box will ensure your previously entered pool information will be saved. If yours doesn't, no biggie. You'll just have to re-enter your pool info once the reflashing process is done. You'll get the dialog box that says, Really replace the running firmware? Click OK. Cue the spinning wheel as the file is installed and the miner rebooted. Once it's done, you'll be taken back to the System Overview page, the same page you see when you first access the Ant Miner's web interface. It'll take a couple of minutes for the miner to reconnect, just like it does on the normal startup. Once you're able to log back in, click the Miner Status tab up at the top to make sure everything's installed correctly. Another quick side note, it's very common for your router to assign the miner a new IP address after reflashing the firmware. If your miner doesn't automatically reconnect to the network after you install the new firmware, it's likely because it was assigned a different IP address. Now, unfortunately, sometimes the web interface route isn't available. On occasion, an issue may pop up that prevents you from accessing that web interface, and fixing it requires a more manual reflashing process. But hey, if everything was easy, what fun would it be? Now let's take a look at how to reflash a miner using a micro SD card. Get a micro SD card and make sure it's formatted to FAT32. It won't work otherwise. Load the zip firmware file on that micro SD card, then unzip the firmware file, and transfer all the folders from the zipped file to the micro SD card, then eject it. 
Once that's done, turn your attention back to the miner and disconnect the ribbon cables. Depending on your miner's model, you may need to disconnect them from the hashing boards or the controller board to proceed with the next steps in the process. The safest and easiest bet is to just disconnect them from both. Next up, inserting the micro SD card. Now here's where things get a little more interesting. Some minor models include a micro SD card slot right next to the Ethernet cable port. If yours does, skip these next couple steps and go right to inserting the micro SD card. If not, keep right on watching. First, unscrew the rear fan or rear chassis plate depending on your minor model. Speaking of model dependencies, for Z9 Mini and V9 Miners only, you can simply unscrew the faceplate on the front of the controller board box and pull the controller board out that way. For everyone else, pull the hashing boards out the rear of the miner chassis and set them aside. Then push the tabs at the rear of the controller board box out and slide the controller board from the chassis. For E3 miners, there's an additional step at this point. Change the JP4 jumper's position as shown here. Insert the micro SD card into the miner controller board and power it on. Again, make sure the hashing boards aren't connected to either the controller board or the power supply. They're not involved in this process at all. Let the miner run for two minutes, just to be safe. That should be enough time for the files to get loaded. Power down the controller board and reinsert it into the miner chassis. Again, for E3 miners, one more step. Move the JP4 jumper back to its original position before reinserting the controller board. Then reassemble the miner. Put the hashing boards back in and screw on the rear fan or chassis plate, again, depending on your miner's model. Or for Z9 Mini and V9 miners, screw the faceplate back on the front of the controller board box. Then reconnect all the ribbon cables, hook up the power supply, and power on the miner. Give it a couple minutes, then try accessing the miner's web interface. Again, much like reflashing via the web interface, this process can cause your router to assign the miner a different IP address than before. An additional power cycle could also be required to get the miner back up and running. So there you go. You're now a firmware flashing pro. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to give the video a like, throw some feedback our way below, and of course subscribe to our channel as we have new videos coming out all the time. See ya!